Scotland face Italy on Saturday afternoon. Who better to talk about the Azuri's hopes ahead of this year's tournament than head coach Connor O'Shea? How are you, Connor? Hey, how are you guys? Good. Hey, Connor, thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, we'll get straight into a bit of Ruggers. Big game at the weekend. Uh, good to talk about the England Ireland game. I'm more excited about the Scotland Italy game, of course. Good um, man, good man. <laughs> so, how's, how's preparation been? Because obviously, in the past, it's been a big history when Scotland play Italy, as I well know. Um, but how's preparation gone uh, for you guys? Um, the pre- preparation's always great, and then you have to play the match, don't you? That's, that's, <laughs> that's the pre-season. problem. It's like the pre-season. So, What's that? Uh, no, it's, 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 going, it's, going, it's going well. I think the, the challenge for us is we know we're better. There's a more confidence within the system. Um, you know, with the way Teresa are performing this year, some of the young players coming through, and you know, the stuff that we're doing is right. Uh, a bit of a longer term project with Zebra but a bit like Scotland it's a good analogy for Italian rugby but we're also pretty aware that everyone else you know this Six Nations is probably the the best standard that we've seen in terms of the form of the teams and Scottish rugby's on a bit of a high with both teams we, we know the challenge ahead so for us it's a, it's a matter of making sure we bring the performance levels we had against Australia in the autumn against Japan away in the second test against Scotland uh, in the Six Nations last year and making that level of performance to have us and from that the results will come uh, it's the only way there's no shortcut to what we've taken on here uh, but we're looking forward to it and obviously looking at the Six Nations and back at results um, Italy haven't won a game since 2015 is that something that plays on your mind as a coach and, and the players talk about or is it more week to week performance uh, and improving the it, whole it, Goody it's a, it's a week to week performance because the, the reality, if you want to look at it, is that we're all the time playing against teams that are ahead of us in, in, in terms of the world rankings. You now have numbers two, three, and four in the world. You've got Scotland where they are in France, and, and like Scotland with the form they're in in terms of the two districts, uh, and France. So it's always a massive challenge. And when you get opportunities like we did last year against Scotland, you can't spurn them as we try and grow something that reality, you know, probably was left wither away for too long. Um, in terms of a system and how it was how it was the opportunity and the structure you know people talk about Ireland but Ireland always are talented players but they never had a system and a structure that allowed them the best and it took years to put that in place it's not just in the last two or three years Scotland for years had talent without a system without a structure without support so there is no shortcut the players we just have to make sure that we bring as I said create a habit in terms of our performance that makes Scotland in the Six Nations, Japan in the second test, and I say the second test, Australia in the autumn, that has to be the, the base. And if we're good enough, we're good enough. And you, you put yourself in with a chance. There'll be big moments and matches that you hope go our way. And, you know, this year, you pray that it's not Greg Laidlaw nailing a kick in the last minute to win a match. It's us. And, um, and then you just dust yourself down and get ready for Wales. And then you get ready for Ireland. And then you go England. And then you go France and you get ready for the World Cup. And uh, it's a mental challenge to keep on getting yourself up and ready for that next game because it, every game is is massive. But you've got to be happy. You mentioned there it's obviously a huge job, Connor, when you went there, probably bigger than you, you, you might have expected. But Zebre and Benetton, they're both doing really well. So there are signs and, and glimmers of hope. Are you, are you seeing that? But it, it, like you mentioned, it's probably just taken a little bit longer than you thought. Uh, you, well, you can feel it, and there's no shortcut. You can certainly feel it. I think the work here in Crowley and Antonio Pavanella did are, are doing at, at Treviso. Uh, you know, three years ago, they're bottom of the Pro 14 or the Pro 12 as it was, and now they're sitting in second in their pool, and uh, they've three home games in the way. So, the massive credit to them. And the under 20s, the last couple of years, have been in the top eight in the world uh, in the World Cup, uh, taking some big scalps. Zebra have suffered. I mean, this year through injury, started the season very competitively. It's been a tough, you know, losing Matteo Monazzi, Marchi Violi, Matteo Bellini, uh, you know, and Maxine and Banda for the start of the season. Then Giovanni Lacata, Renato Giamaroli, they've just been absolutely for a, a small squad, had major players taken away from it. But, uh, you know, certainly the project in place for them is a strong one in the long term. So you can feel it. Uh, you love this magic wand and everything to happen um, overnight. And there are loads of things that I'd like to do differently as well on top of what we're doing but we feel we're making strides but you're judged as you guys will say to me very quickly you're judged on what happens this Saturday and um, you know people can try that stuff if they want and they can look at the it's 2015 but we'll just keep on focusing on improving our performance improving what we allow put around these players to give them a chance you guys know 
without a structure, without an environment to be as good as you can be, you can be as talented as you like. And that's one of the things that we're trying to give these players as much as we can uh, within what we uh, within within the resources that we have. And you talk about looking at other things to help improve the players. You've had Wayne Smith over helping you out in Italy a bit over the last year on and off. Um, I think you said he made you feel like you knew nothing about rugby and that's what happens between me and Jim every week. I teach him something. It blows my mind. <laughs> um, how, how, I mean, how great was that to get his rugby intel, um, A, coaching and B, for, just for all the other coaches and people around Italy to, to soak yeah, up? It's it, it, it's brilliant. It really is. And, you know, I mean, he's, he texted me this morning saying, you know, <laughs> looking forward to the Six Nations because he needs his rugby fix. I don't know how many fixes of rugby he needs in his life. So, <laughs> we'll chat to him. It's a bit from a distance. It'll be over in July. But uh, it's, it's counsel, um, advice. One of the things that Wayne and I, I joked to him around two years ago when I met him that if he ever retires, he has to come and help Italy because he's coached here, he's played here, he's fluent in Italian. And uh, when I saw you retired, I stopped him a text and said, well, you said you would, so uh, you have to put your money where your mouth is. So he's just been brilliant in that sense of just a wise counsel, understanding, been through a lot, ups and downs. Um, you know, and, and uh, probably most people would think they're all ups, but there's plenty of other things that he's had to go through, which is a help. And also just someone from the outside who's not immersed in that day to day, who gets too emotional, just being able to detach themselves and say, Hey, you did this well, this well, this well. Have you thought about this? And I think it's important. You're all the time learning. You can't, you can't, you can never learn enough. Uh, and if you think you know, <laughs> talk to him and you'll realize you know nothing. And just, just very similar to obviously Wayne Smith, if you get me a house on Lake Como, mate, I'll come and help out as well. <laughs> it's Lake Guard, unfortunately. I couldn't afford Como. Oh. That's, that's, that's where all the rich and famous are. <laughs> well, that could, could be where Goody ends up. I just wanted to chat as well, uh, Connor, because um, we had Jake Paledri on the uh, on the phone a few weeks ago, and he's obviously been tearing up trees over the last couple of seasons and was almost like a breakthrough player for you uh, last year. Is there anyone else that we should be looking at, um, the listeners in Italian rugby, that you're excited to see? Well, you know, I'm pretty excited after a couple of years, rather than someone new and exciting, someone who a few years back was a very standout, probably prospect in, in centre play in Italy, Luca Morisi, who's had a couple of years of horrific injury and ill luck with injury. Um, and to have him back fully fit is, uh, I think, it's really, really exciting for Italian rugby because he's a guy who just does simple things really, really well. Um, I think everyone can point to the injuries they have. And you said about Jake, you know, Matteo Monazzi is a loss, and as is Mattia Bellini, probably Leo Sarto coming back from injury. So Marty Violi at nine, but we've got a good squad, and I'm just looking forward to seeing those. But Luca would be a player that is not inexperienced, but after the years he's had, um, I'm really excited to have him back around. And then looking at the other end of the spectrum, Sergio Parise uh, could be his last Six Nations. Has he suggested that will be the case? Um, and has he got over to Italy yet after his game yesterday with Stade Francais? Because Roman Poit yeah, yeah, had a shocker. He's arrived in. Yeah, to God, it was, uh, yeah, it was some interesting tackling at the end of it as well, I believe. I believe <laughs> oh, it was yeah. Good coverage of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, your, 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 uh, your name goes far and wide, Goody. Oh, dear. Um, I, I, I am wide. Not I am good. wide. <laughs> Uh, no, he's made it overall right here. So he flew in, uh, he went back up from Toulon and I have another chance because he's arrived just as we were in the middle of our session here this afternoon. But he um, had a pretty, pretty tough end of the game for, for a stab and I think probably a knockdown that was missed and uh, like you could see two tries like that was, was difficult. So he won't, he won't be in a good mood. He certainly wasn't straight after the game. All right, Connor, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck uh, for the competition and especially the uh, opening game in Edinburgh this weekend. Oh, don't say that. Andy. Come on, Italy. Come on, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Connor. <laughs> Hashtag always Italy. Talk to you soon. Cheers, Cheers Connor. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to say it. He's a top man.